So let's talk about toxic femininity. Yes, you heard that correctly. Toxic femininity. I'm sure some of you guys are sitting there right now saying, there's no such thing as toxic femininity, only toxic masculinity. I agree. There are some traits of masculinity that can be toxic. And I am not talking about Russell Westbrook's choice of clothing. I don't think any heterosexual male thinks his choice of clothing is masculine. But that's a discussion for a later time. There is a stigma that males keep things to themselves and don't express their feelings. I think most men would recognize the ridiculousness of that tendency and would characterize that as toxic. Now, since I am willing to admit that there is toxic masculinity, do you agree that there are some pretty big traits that can be identified as toxic femininity? Let's talk about six of them. Welcome back to the Jack Talk channel. If you like the content, feel free to like, share, subscribe, whatever. That being said, I just want to jump right into these traits of toxic femininity. Putting leverage on a court or custody dispute by falsely claiming that the male abused you or your children. Now imagine you're getting a divorce or just a straight up custody dispute after a split. You understand that if you take full custody of your children, that entitles you to more child support. How might it be possible to get what you want? How about saying that you or your child were abused? This forces the court, not always, but this forces the court to investigate such claims and in the meantime, giving you what you want. This also provides a further hurdle for the father who is statistically less likely to get his children in a custody dispute. Hmm, that sounds pretty toxic to me. Blaming this behavior on your period. A woman's monthly cycle we know can trigger mood swings. Well, one woman says she felt so much rage each month, she felt capable of murder. We all understand the things that come along with PMS. Irritability, bloating, uh, mood swings, etc. That being said, when women are out in public with these symptoms, they seem not to manifest as much as when they are with someone they're close to, or especially close to males. Males are typically the direction of ire in these situations. Have you ever done something where you thought, that was kind of an unreasonable thing that I did or said? Maybe perhaps because something didn't happen the way you wanted to, but you blamed your behavior on your period. Hmm, sounds pretty toxic to me. Trapping men. Having men take care of your child knowing that it's not his. This happens to be a trait that can only be performed by women, and it's a lot more common than people think. We have all heard stories of where a woman of a certain race is in a relationship with a man of the same race and the woman goes to give birth and the baby is a mixture of her race and someone else's. Meaning the father isn't really the father. If you've never heard a story like that, uh, ask a midwife or a delivery nurse. I'm sure they have plenty of stories like that. But what happens if there wasn't any mixed race infidelity? Who tells the father then? This is crazy because you're forcing a man to maintain a lifestyle for you and your child knowing that it's not his or maybe you don't even know that it's not his. But you didn't tell him. Hmm, sounds pretty toxic to me. Being physically abusive with the man knowing that he is most likely not to be believed and or you won't face any legal action. If a woman picks up the phone, calls the police and says that she is physically abused, it is almost a guarantee the male will be removed from the house and most likely in the back of a cruiser. On the flip side, because men are clearly understood to be more biologically aggressive in physical situations, when attacked by a woman, they tend not to be believed. Why? Since he's a man, he should be able to defend himself. But that brings into effect, how much can a man actually defend himself from a woman though? Say for example, a woman starts a physical altercation with a man. If that man defends himself and while doing so leaves a mark on a woman, who do you think is going to go to jail? Hmm, sounds pretty toxic to me. Falsely accusing men of sexual abuse and rape. This part gets pretty touchy for most people, but I'm going to be blunt. That saying about believing all women, that's mad stupid. All I'm going to say is open up Google and type in man falsely accused of rape or man falsely imprisoned for rape. This is way more prevalent than people believe. That being said, hella toxic. Leveraging sex as a tool to get what you want. This goes along with typically thinking that your significant other should feel lucky. Not only is that stuff manipulative, but it's narcissistic as well. If you are not willing to commit to your significant other physically, especially when you're married, are you even ready to be in a relationship? 
if you're at the point where you're leveraging sex, it simply has just become transactional. And at that point, you're no different than your basic sex worker. There is an honest discussion here, but sadly, it'll be chalked up as female outliers. Nah, toxic femininity is much more common than we think of. Am I wrong?